I'm back in the playing hall of the chess.com Isle of Man International 2018 to take you through my game of the day from round four. Well, after just three rounds here uh, in this tournament that started with 165 players, and hopefully we'll finish with 165 players, um, after three rounds there were only six players on three out of three. Uh, it just shows that competition is really tough here and a lot of the top players have had draws nicked from them. So I want to take you through one of those games between two of the players on three out of three. So we have with the white pieces Arkady Nidic, who represents Azerbaijan, and his opponent Pavel Tregubov from Russia. Now, Nidic, very interesting player, a very ambitious player plays really aggressively and incredibly experienced. He's about to turn 33, um, so, you know, still quite young enough um, and very active in, in the chess world and has had considerable successes over the years, but also crashed on quite a few occasions. But he's rated solidly over 2700, 2721. Pavel Tregubov, well, he was a former European individual champion, which I think shows what a class act he is. But he's gone more into training as he's, he's got older. Anyway, a, an intriguing context between two highly experienced players, both on three out of three. It's a French defence and the winner variation. And Tregubov plays not Bishop takes c3 here, but bishop a5, which is a very old variation uh, going right back to the 1920s. Um, but Botvinnik took it up, and after him, quite a few Armenian players played it. And just recently, uh, quite a few of the top players have been experimenting with it. For example, Mamadyarov, Magnus Carlsen, incredibly, played it in Beale this summer but um, almost came unstuck against the Swiss player Nico Georgiadis. In any case, um, well, we also saw it in a couple of rounds ago here in the Isle of Man where Levon Aronian with white had to face this and Levon played Bishop D2, which is not the most challenging move. Nidic typically played the most challenging move, the most aggressive move, B4, which was a discovery of Alikin way back in the 1920s. So pawn takes pawn, and this was famously played in the game between Fischer and Tal, uh, which a crazy game, which is in my 60 memorable games. And here the old line is to play knight e7 and to give up uh, the pawns on g7 and h7. Um, but somehow this is rather under a cloud. I'm afraid computer analysis has rather shown that white is probably doing well here. If you don't know this, of course, it looks pretty random. But, well, for example, Etienne Bacot uh, played this against Vaganyan in Beale 2017, and another game I witnessed. Um, and basically, he just cracked this system totally. So coming back to Queen G4, Tregubov played a move which is currently really trendy. And that's king f8. So stops the queen taking some, some pawns, but of course the king is displaced. Knight into b5. And here is where Carlsen played bishop c7, but actually got, um, well, it was a, bit, a pretty random game, to be honest. But bishop b6 has a, a slightly better reputation. And this has all been played before, so uh, Nidic just rounding up the pawn on d4. Here, actually, Grishuk played bishop d3 against Mamadyarov, but um, Nidic simply recaptured on d4. So we've got a typical French position where black has this nice pawn chain, which keeps him on the board, basically, otherwise his position would be desperate with the king on f8. But that solid pawn chain is what black relies on here. 
h5 attacking the queen. It rather reminds me of this game I looked at of Jeffrey Siong's from the, the previous round uh, where there was also a king on an f8, actually, even though a completely different opening but still had the characteristics of a French defence. And here Tregubov re simply recaptured on c6. Knight takes queen has been played before, but there's no doubt that this leads to a position where white simply has a, a pleasant uh, advantage. I mean, I think you can see white's development is very nice. Um, typical positional advantage that you get in the French. But Tregubov played pawn takes knight on c6 and he was playing this pretty quickly so obviously preparation and queen g3 a5 so quite typically black well, chips away at the pawn on b4 but also prepares to exchange off the the so-called bad french bishop with bishop a6 so this is absolutely standard So bishop to d3 threatening to take the knight which drops back and now the queen goes on a little tour again um, potentially looking at knight g5 here uh, so the king just ducks out of the way and white castles and now black plays bishop a6 well white can't avoid the exchange of bishops so does that but of course, the rook looks pretty odd on a6, and black's rooks are split. One of my uh, big themes that I, I like to mention a lot. There is a problem when you, your rooks are split. White's rooks protect each other, and they can work well together, but the black rooks don't. And this is potentially an issue in the position. And, of course, black's king on g8... It's not clear where it's going to uh, going to find a home. Um, it looks very awkwardly placed at the moment. I mean, it would like to stay on g8, but that means at the moment the rook on h8 is is trapped. And Nidich sought to open up the position on the queen side. Uh, excellent play. I mean, there are so many similarities with uh, Jeffrey Siong's game from that I I looked at yesterday, where he also opened up the queen side. Uh, when his opponent's king was kind of stuck on the king side. And the queen dropped back to c1 and h4. So uh, Tregubov looking to bring the rook into the game here on h5, exactly um, as Vishnu played against Siong. This is quite extraordinary, the similarities. This is, is a very interesting moment. Um, White has various ways that he can try and make progress here and it's I think in a in a game really a, a very difficult decision to make for example you could push the pawn to c5 and then blockade on d4 and, and perhaps try to push with b5 that's a possibility um, Nidich chose b5 and now I was expecting pawn takes and perhaps here but it looks as though black is actually all right in this position if he plays d4 quickly and then attacks this e pawn and although white can take here well black will take on e5 and magically black's pieces are actually pretty well coordinated there but Nidich came up with an, uh, another idea after pawn takes pawn, and this is absolutely typical of him. He's such an ambitious, aggressive player. He decided not to recapture on b5, but instead took on d5. Now, queen takes will lose immediately to check, and then queen takes rook. So after pawn takes pawn on d5, black has to recapture. So this is Nidich's idea. He's given up a pawn, but there are a lot of loose points in black's position. These pawns are weak. The rook is still very poorly placed on a6. The king obviously not great. 
And now there's this pawn on e5, which potentially always threatens to advance to e6 to destabilize black's king position. So I think a very, very um, creative pawn sacrifice that, that offers a lot of practical chances. Rook d1 to attack the d-pawn. Now, big dilemma. Should black push on? But then it's perhaps not so easy to bring the rook to h5 because that's not as stable when white can push forward on occasion with g4. Or do you play rook h5 immediately? That was the move that Tregubov played. But after h3, then Nidic certainly found security for his king. With hindsight, it might have been better for black to push, but very unclear and, and yeah, very unclear to, de to determine which is the best move. But once white has this in, then his king has a nice safe square to run to if um, the occasion requires it. Queen d7, which protects the b5 pawn and looks to run up here as well. Now here's an interesting moment. Um, I'm going to play a couple of variations. We have to compare and contrast. Queen d2 looks normal to attack the pawn on d5. But then watch this variation. White takes the pawn. But knight f4 is a strong move. And after rook b5, knight h3 check, black wins back a pawn and is absolutely fine here. Okay, bear that in mind. Nidic played queen c2, just preparing to bring the rook to c1. Rook a7. Now this is incredibly subtle. After rook a7, bringing the rook back into play, Nidic played queen d2. So a really curious waste of a tempo one would think. Okay, why on earth did he do that? Well, one reason is this. Let's just play as in the variation I just showed. What would happen if rook f5? White takes on d5. Now you might think, well, this is just the same as the previous position, but the difference is the rook on a7 and not on a6. So after knight f4, the rook takes on b5 and wins a tempo because black has to guard the bishop on b6 and then white is a pawn up. So very subtle stuff from Nidic. So after queen d2, instead of going for that, Pavel Tregubov played the rook to c7, which looks reasonable. Bishop d4. I think that's a good practical move. Um, exchanging off that potentially dangerous bishop. And after the exchange, also white's queen is able to enter into black's position. And here, it, I think, is a really crunch moment in the game. Uh, Tregubov dropped back with the knight to e7. Always a dilemma whether you defend something or whether you just kind of burn your boats. It looks as though queen f5 is a better move. Giving up the d-pawn and just tucking the king to h7, but obviously preventing queen d8 check. Giving a pawn and then just going for it on the king's side. And again, magically, we have black's pieces far better coordinated here and threats potentially to take to sack the exchange on f3 Knight f4, obviously, also a, a, a very natural move to play here. And black certainly has very good compensation for a pawn. So let's go back. So this important position and knight e7 played. And here is where Nidic starts to take control. Not that it, the position is um, certainly objectively better for white, but I think once you get the initiative, it's pretty good. Um, Nigel Short dropped by at this moment in the commentary and he suggested rook c4 
to shut out white's rook which seems logical but actually queen d6 is a strong move black can't exchange queens the d-pawn's too strong and if queen e8 then e6 really starts to get through to black's king rook b7 played and that queen is very annoying piece again the end game is not good for black at all pawn is too strong so rook b7 tregubov is waiting and by this stage he was running short of time uh, well neither player had so much time but tregubov was certainly shorter on time than uh, nidich and this queen creating all kinds of problems and also the rook here as well on c5 Obviously, white just wants to try and nick that pawn, so Tregubov defended with the queen. Now, e6 is a very interesting move. Looks very logical to, to me to get through to black's king, but, well, rook c1, uh, also excellent, just coordinating beautifully, and just compare white's rooks with black's rooks. White's rooks doing a fantastic job attacking on the c-file. So Tregubov gets rid of the queen, but just watch what happens here. Um, I mean, maybe rook bb6 was better instead of this, but even so would have been very good for white. But queen b4, looking at this pawn, the, the rook switches back, and now white's queen switches beautifully to the other side of the board. And, and I think it just shows when you have harmony, when you have space, you can switch so easily from side to side and this is a wonderful attack now so white looking good on the king side um, potentially just taking on h4 but of course the chief threat rook c8 winning the queen which Trogubov stops but then knight g5 hitting the rook and things have just gone completely now after Obviously, rook takes pawn impossible because of the check. Shogubov played queen takes pawn. And now, Nidich didn't even bother taking the rook. Queen h4 is far stronger with the deadly threat. Uh, well, several threats here, actually. Uh, well, let's just see a couple of moves. What about knight g6? Well, this loses like this white takes the exchange comes in with a rook and that is absolutely fatal followed by a check on the eighth rank and what about rook h6 blocking the queen out well that allows a very nice checkmate like this and let's go to the very end checkmate now, i thought that was a wonderful game by arkady nidich um, he is so dangerous with the initiative and, and such an ambitious player. I think you know, he got it absolutely right in this game. So that victory brings him to four out of four. Now, there was one of the other games with the players on 100% was also decisive. Wang Hao defeated Erwin Lamy. So there are now just two players on 100%, four out of four going into the fifth round and that's uh, Wang Hao will play white against Arkady Nidic. Watch out for that game. I, I hope it's going to be a bit of a classic. Both players look on fantastic form. Do subscribe. Uh, just click on the button up there. If you're not a subscriber to the channel, it's free to subscribe and do consider joining us on patreon.com powerplay chess and join the inner circle or if you just want to make a one-off donation on paypal you can do that as well click on the buttons up there and do check out the tournament playlist too which you'll also find the link up there as well thanks for watching